Welcome once again. Most of you have had some interactions with me, email, Zoom, different things, but so nice to be in the same room with you um, to start in a, in, a, in a certain way, sort of start over again now your career. You'll be starting many times. You'll start again in August. Um, you're familiar probably with Father McShane, but you may not have heard him yet, but you will in August at the orientation on the uh, 29th. And he's a terrific speaker. He's the kind of speaker who's so good that I can tell you ahead of time he's a great speaker and you'll still love his presentation. Um, our provost, who's sort of in charge of all the academic aspects of the university, uh, Dr. Dennis Jacobs. And there's Father McShane again. And in the middle is uh, Mario Gabelli, who the school is named for. He went to Fordham as an undergrad to the business school uh, and did extremely well with a financial company, Gamco, and um, has been very generous to Fordham. And so we honored him by naming the business school uh, for him. And you see next to him, uh, Donna Rapicholi, who's the Dean for the business school, both the graduate programs and the undergraduate programs. Um, and you'll see quite a lot of Dean Rapicholi at different events. Uh, when you do really well and you get, the dean, get on the Dean's list, she'll be the one to hand you the certificate. Um, but um, with helping her for the undergrad programs as an Associate Dean, uh, Professor Elizabeth Casenza, who is uh, from the business law area, and um, she also is a Fordham undergrad, as is Dean Rapicholi. They're both Fordham undergrads. Um, and uh, Professor Casenza went on to Harvard to do her JD. And there I am. So um, I'm sort of the one-stop shop in terms of anything academic. Um, you probably won't have to deal with Father McShane or Dean Rapicholi or Dean Casenza much because most of the time I'll be able to help you with whatever it is you need. So I urge you to at least start with me um, it, you know, at the end of this presentation, I'll give you some other important emails for things like residential life for those of you living on campus, um, you know, the health office, uh, international students have to deal with the international services office. So there are other offices to deal with on certain things, but in terms of academics, um, you can pretty much come to me. And if I, if I'm not the one to help you, I'll point you to where you need to go. So uh, I did some of this at the Zoom session, so I'm not gonna belabor the points, but uh, just review quickly the curriculum as a whole and how your, your schedule for the fall is gonna look like, and then talk about a few other things that might be helpful. The transition to college, as you probably heard, is, is, is a big step, you know, and uh, some of you will, will do it rather easily and some of you may have some bumps, but we'll be there to help you. There's a lot of offices here at the university that will be there to help you uh, with the transition. And, um, but you know, obviously you have to do your part uh, because I said it on the Zoom night and I told you that night that I'll be saying it a lot between now and all, in September. Um, one of the big differences between high school and college is that your learning is now in your hands. Um, the university professors will not hold you by the hand or spoon feed you. They're there. Their first job is doing research in their field. That's what they're really paid for. It's a research university, but their second job is teaching, and they, many, for many of them, that's the part of the job they love the most. But they're not going to tr treat you like babies. They're going to deliver the material. They're going to expect you to come to class prepared, having read what you needed to read for that week, so that you can engage with the professor and actively engage, which, of course, will make your time in the classroom more enjoyable, rather than sitting there because you haven't prepared and just kind of hiding in your desk, hoping that you, know, you don't get called on and watching the clock tick away for an hour and 15 minutes. So I urge you to come to class prepared so that you can engage the professor and also engage the professors outside of class. They have office hours. At least once a semester, you should make it a point to go and see them, especially if there's a particular part of the class that maybe you're having trouble grasping completely, or there's something that you like and you're excited by and you just wanna go and talk for a few minutes with the professor. It's a great habit to get into. You hope that each semester you'll pick up at least one professor who you'll have some good interactions with. So when you're a junior or a senior, and you're applying for something and you need a recommendation, you know who you're gonna to turn to. This professor, you had a good interaction with him or her, and that's the one who'll do a good recommendation for you. So the ball's in your court, you have to take uh, control of your education now. And uh, they're here almost like coaches, they're available, um, but if you don't drive the car, it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, so this is sort of the whole class schedule of how we divide up the week. Um, and as you see, 
uh, Tuesdays and Fridays are paired together, uh, the same colors. And you see mostly the same colors between Monday and Thursday, except for the middle of the day, when Thursday we have uh, an activity block for a lot of the student clubs, the meet and so forth. So those Monday classes also meet on Wednesday. And you see sometimes a class will meet once a week, but for a longer period. And there you see in green, um, in, on Wednesday afternoon is that time that you're gonna have ground floor. So that's one class that'll meet just once a week, um, but for a longer period of time. Now, a typical schedule looks something like this. And uh, look at all the free time, right? Is that correct? Why are you, why are you shaking your heads? Why is that? What, what's wrong with what I just said? All of you who were on the Zoom and weren't sleeping. It's not free time because that's time when you're gonna to have to be doing a lot of the work that's, uh, you know, to keep up with the class work, to, to, to come to class engaged. Um, now, some of it's free time, some of it, you know, you, there are things you wanna explore in college. Uh, there are routines you wanna keep, you know, each day or whatever, you have to find time and make time for those things. So yeah, you will have some flex time in there to start to craft your own life schedule. But again, you're here, you're on your own a little bit more than you were before. Uh, so you have to figure out how are you going to do that responsibly. Um, but all of that white space is certainly not free time. Um, overall, you're going to need to do 40 courses to graduate. And they break down mo into basically four types of classes. There are certain core liberal arts classes. Those uh, by, by liberal arts, they're not taught by the business school per se, but by Fordham College. Um, and those will include things like math and economics, which obviously have a very direct uh, impact on, 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 on the business skills you want, uh, but also will include things like English, philosophy, history, fine arts. Uh, and those are classes that will, first of all, help to make you a more interesting person, give you a well-rounded education, which is something the Jesuits want you to have when you come to a school like Fordham, but also will impact your work in business, certainly because they will make you a more interesting person. They'll give you a perspective on the world um, to understand the history of the world, to understand uh, religions throughout the world. Um, philosophy will help you to frame questions in, in the right way, which will be usually helpful in business. So these will give you what we might call soft skills that will uh, you know, help you in everything you do. And then you have business core courses. So everybody, no matter what you choose as your particular concentration, all of you will take a certain number of business courses like accounting and finance and marketing and management and, um, and starting with the ground floor this fall um, that you'll all have. And um, many of these core business courses you will be taking a year from now in the fall of sophomore year. And as you probably know by now, that's a sort of a linchpin semester for us in, in, the, in the Gabelli School because you will do our famous consulting challenge project. You'll be on a team of about five students and you'll all be in the same classes together. So you'll all have the same white space because you'll need some of that white space to meet, won't they, Stephanie? <laughs> yeah, and as the semester goes on, you'll be meeting more and more with your team because there's not the kind of project where you can just say, okay, you go do this and you go do this and you go do this. You've got to really work together. It's an integrated project where you really have to uh, strategize together. You're going to have a company assigned to you, a major company. Last year, we had companies like General Foods, General, General Mills, General Motors, JetBlue, Intel. And whatever company your team has, you're going to use what you're doing in finance and marketing, and you're going to analyze the company using those things. You're going to look at what their financial reality is, what industry are they in, who are their big competitors, what's their market share, and what opportunities or challenges are facing them. And uh, then you're gonna come up as a team of consultants with the idea that you think that company should be doing. And you'll present that at the end of the semester with both a PowerPoint and, uh, and an oral presentation that each of you will participate in. So your business communication class will help you with those parts of the project, will help you with the PowerPoint, will help you with the oral presentation. Some, some of you will be natural, uh, naturally good at speaking in public, others will, that will be maybe the, one of the biggest challenges. Uh, any of you watch uh, any of you watch the old reruns of Seinfeld? I actually watched it when it was really on. But uh, he has one great routine where he talks about 
they did a survey of people's greatest fears and speaking in public was the number one fear ahead of death. So he said, you know, at funerals, people would rather be in the coffin than giving the eulogy. So some of you may find public speaking a real challenge. You won't by the end of that semester. You will become much better at it because of this project. And what our students say all the time is <clears throat> as they move on from that project in the beginning of sophomore year and start going out for interviews, for internships and jobs, they use that project quite a lot in those interviews. They talk about, uh, they can speak very articulately about how they analyzed the company and what they decided to do. But also every one of your interviews will ask you about teamwork. It's such an important part of doing business today. And they're gonna to wanna to know, did you ever work on a team? What was it like? What were the ups and downs? And you'll have plenty to say because you've had this long team experience in the, in the fall of sophomore year. So the blue bucket are those business courses and a few, of the, a few of the liberal arts core in the green bucket and a few of the business core in the blue bucket may not get done in the first two years even. A few of them will still be with you to finish in junior and senior year. So don't feel like this is a, a rush or a race to how to get these all done. But you certainly wanna knock off some of those liberal arts core in the first year and uh, you'll get a lot of the business core done in the second year, but not all. Then when you do get to junior and senior year, you're gonna mostly be in that red bucket where you're doing uh, at least seven courses in the concentration that you choose. And the concentrations for us here at Lincoln Center where you're all, you're all coming in to do a global business major, but you'll choose <clears throat> global finance, global marketing, digital media and technology on the media track or digital media and technology on the technology track. So those are your choices. And you know, some of you may have a pretty good inkling now of what you wanna do, but others, you know, or even if you do, or if you don't, by the end of freshman year or the middle of sophomore year, you may go take, choose a different path. So there's no need to, to nail it down now. Um, you have time. Um, I'd say spring of sophomore year or certainly fall of junior year will be when you're taking your first specific courses in that concentration. So you have some time. And then there are uh, some electives. You have about seven electives that you can use in a number of ways. You know, there are certain things that aren't required, but if you wanna use some of your electives to do like a foreign language, it's not required, but if you wanna take a couple semesters, um, you can. Um, if you wanna just dabble in something like computer science or visual arts or, you know, political science or whatever your interests are, you can use your electives just to explore your interests. You could pool all those electives together to try to get a minor in a certain area. But I find students are often attracted to the idea of, well, I'm not gonna have this only this major, I'm also gonna have this minor and, and this secondary concentration. And it's like they're decorating a Christmas tree and wondering how much can they, how many ornaments can they get on it? It's not like that. You know, in academia, you're expected to have a concentration where you've gone deep into one area. And if you go to a good school like Fordham, you're gonna have a certain breadth of education by having those core courses. But to do a minor or a secondary concentration is by no means a requirement. And not even if you wanna stand out, would I say that's the best way to try to stand out. The best way to try to stand out is keep as high a GPA as you can. Do well right from the start in your freshman year, because if you, if you do have a tough transition and you get, you know, uh, hit some bumps along the way, you can end up with a GPA where you're gonna to have to sort of dig yourself out of that hole over the next few years. And not to say that's not possible, but it's better if you can, you know, keep a focus right away from freshman year on that GPA. And, you know, not everyone's gonna get a 3.7 or 3.8. Um, if you can, you should. And most of the people in this program are capable of certainly getting 3.5, 3.6 or 3.7 if they really apply themselves. But if you're more destined to a 3.4 or 3.5, fine, if that's what you're gonna get when you apply yourself, then apply yourself and get it. So that GPA is gonna make you stand out, you know, is, is more than anything else. But if there is an area that you do wanna really do because you think it'll complement what you're doing as your co main concentration, by all means, use those electives um, to explore that. Some people who are doing finance wanna do more economics to balance with their finance or wanna do computer science to get into sort of that FinTech area. Or some people in marketing do visual arts because they're very creative and they wanna explore the sort of the creative side of, of marketing. Uh, or you might wanna do more anthropology or psychology or sociology to understand the marketplace more. Um, so there are, there are ways to use your electives um, that really only you can tell what the best way to use those electives are. Some of you will come in with AP credits or IB credits. And if you do, some of those might apply to 
core courses like macroeconomics or microeconomics or calculus, but many of them will apply to those electives and you'll get, it will take care of some of the courses you need to graduate, the 40 courses, uh, but they may come in under electives. So before I go on, is there any questions up to this point? And you can direct a question to Stephanie too, she's an expert. Um, Patrick's an expert, everyone, they're all experts here. Um, so the ground floor, what is it? It's a class where you're gonna be introduced to various aspects of business. And uh, each week you'll hear different aspects. You'll be asked several times, maybe five or six times during the semester to write an essay about that aspect of business you're studying that week. Uh, and those essays will be graded in two ways. Your ground floor teacher, who's a business person, will grade it for the content, that you, what you're, how you're analyzing the business or reporting on that business or that aspect of business. But we'll also have somebody from the English department correcting it from a writing perspective, you know? So in a way, it's your first uh, college writing course is the ground floor. Um, in the spring, you'll probably have your first English composition class, uh, which will also obviously be heavy writing. Um, so it, there's, there's a number of aspects to the ground floor and you will also have a team project in the ground floor. Not quite as extensive as that team project you'll be doing in sophomore year, but it will be a first attempt to work with a few of your classmates and sort of design a business uh, over the course of the semester. Uh, <clears throat> here's another presentation of those liberal arts core courses, just to say that the ones above the yellow line, uh, macro, micro, stats, uh, math finite and math calculus are things that you really do need to get done in first year, um, along, with, along with accounting actually. So those are all courses you will need to get done either in fall or spring. So most of you have, probably macro and micro and finite math in your schedules already for the fall, unless you had credit for one of those. And you maybe you'll take statistics and calculus and accounting in the spring. So between fall and spring, you'll get those done. But you'll also take maybe um, a philosophy of human nature or faith and critical reason or one of those liberal arts courses, which will be a nice balance to your, to your uh, first uh, semester of college. So there is a sort of a, a, a rough example of, um, of what would, might, might look, not every single one of you will have exactly this schedule, but you know, many of you will have something that looks very much like this um, in the fall and then the same then in the spring. I have sent these slides out to those of you who are on the, so if you wanna look, go back and look more carefully when you get home, or if you haven't gotten them, just send me an email and I'll, I'll send them to you. Um, some of you, because you do come in with some credits, are gonna wonder, well, I already have credit for macro or micro or calculus or whatever, so how am I gonna fill up my two semesters? Well, there are other core liberal arts and a couple of other core business things you could do in freshman year if you want to, um, but um, there are certain things you should not do in freshman year because they're part of that big project you're gonna do in the fall of sophomore year. So this slide sort of presents the whole four years uh, which I've already sort of referenced that in junior and senior year, you'll be moving more into your concentration and then finishing up any of the core courses you haven't done yet. Uh, today's an important day or this week because up until now, many of you have accessed your information on Fordham by going to my.fordham.edu, okay? Well, this week, I think maybe officially on Wednesday, June 30th, my.fordham.edu going away. So you will now access the same information by simply going to the general Fordham webpage, www.fordham.edu. And um, you will uh, log in. And um, once you log in, it'll know it's you. And it'll be the same as when you used to go to my.fordham.edu. You'll be able to access all the same applications uh, that you did before. So if you want to look up your schedule, you go to the registration information, you'll find these famous six icons, and the one says view your registration information, and that's where you can see fall 2021 is the semester, and you'll get your schedule there. Um, a listing of the five courses on the top, and on the bottom, uh, sort of a map of the week with uh, when your classes are meeting. Um, okay. 
in your schedule, along with ground floor and the other five the other courses you have, you all have a, an advising class on Mondays, uh, either at 10 a.m., 11.30, 1 o'clock, or 2.30. So that's a class you'll have with me, but not every week. In fact, there are 15 weeks in the semester. We'll probably only meet five or six times. But that time on Monday, I've put into your schedule so it's blocked up. And if there's a week when I tell you we're not having advising this week, great. That's a time you can do some work or use a free time. Um, but there will be those five or six weeks when I will, we will be meeting and we'll be doing some important conversation about getting ready for the spring, uh, other things about adjusting to college and um, what you need to know to, to succeed. Okay. You'll be asked to do several tutorials this summer or, or just as you're beginning in September. Uh, a few of them are not from me, they're from the people who are running today, the student affairs, the student involvement offices. And those are things like, uh, there's one about, I think, uh, use of alcohol and you know, other substances and stuff, and how to be responsible in college. Uh, the same thing about sexual harassment and things like that. And things that have become important issues in our culture today. And they'll ask you to do these tutorials so we know that you have the kind of information you should have as you begin college. I will ask you to do just one of these tutorials, and that's this one called Academic Integrity. But don't worry about it now. But in, in, as you start in September, I'll ask you to do that one. It usually takes about an hour or so to do it. And uh, you do have to answer certain questions at the end and pass by answering enough correctly so you don't have to do the whole tutorial over again. So just, um, but Academic Integrity is important, not just because obviously we don't want people cheating. Of course, that's true. But academic integrity in college means more than that. It means really that you're entering a certain level of academic discipline where using what you're reading that others, others have thought ahead of you, you wanna build on what others have thought and what others have written about. That's good, that's not cheating. You, as you write papers in philosophy or, uh, or uh, history or whatever, you, you're not gonna just be asked, well, what do you think about, what do you think about the Civil War? You know? uh, it's not just a reflection on what you think. It's a question of you've read these articles or you've read this book. Uh, what did the author say? What points do you feel were really important? And how would you compare what he said over here with what this other person said over here? And where would you contrast those? What points would you find were out? You know, so that's what they're looking for you to do. And when you do that, you have to be careful to say, well, this idea, I didn't make it up. I got it from reading this book on this page and so forth. You know that. You've probably done that in high school papers. We've had to cite thing. So you'll have to use the proper citations and everything to give credit to what ideas. But the idea, the point is to use those ideas that you, you've decided were more important and then fuse them somehow and integrate them somehow where you then say what, you, what, what you're trying to say. So that's what you know, academic integrity is also about, how to enter into that higher education milieu and do things properly. Um, as I said, it's a global business major, and that will come up in a number of ways. It will come up because your teachers will put a lot of emphasis on the global aspect of business today, but that's not different than what the students are going to develop school over those hills, where they're not doing a global business major. Of course, they're also going to be talking about the global aspect of business. I think, uh, you know, we will, we will do some special classes that will have a strong emphasis on the global aspect, but more than anything, you're going to be in this room, and among the students in this room, 35% of them are going to be international students, right? I, and and uh, you know, some of you may have already a lot of international experience. Some of you have very little or no international experience. You will, by the end of your time here at Fordham, have the opportunity to grow quite a lot if you engage with each other. So that's the other thing. Besides engaging your professors, I encourage you to join student clubs, uh, make friends, and engage each other because one of the things you'll be learning in the spring of freshman year, you'll take a course called Career Exploration. It's not one of your five full courses that in the spring. It's a one credit course at least once a week for about 10 weeks. So it's not one of your five full courses. But it is an important class because you'll be hearing from some of the professors and some of our uh, advisors who, who are there to help you get internships and jobs. 
They'll help you really go to work on your resume and make it really shine. They'll, they'll, you'll develop a LinkedIn profile. You'll, you'll go to some um, career fairs and, and learn how to interact with companies that are represented at career fairs. Um, so uh, the other thing they'll talk about is building your networks. It's important that you start to build a network, a network of people you've come to know, you've had some interactions with. You'll go to a talk here, in this, maybe in this room, and you'll hear somebody from industry who's come here to talk about certain topics that night. And afterwards, you come down and say hello. You know, if you heard something interesting during the talk, you ask them about it. And maybe you shoot them an email the next week and just say, I loved your talk. I'm really interested in getting into this aspect of the business. You know, uh, that's how you start to build a network. And your classmates are part of that network. And the fact that you have such a huge number of international students is a great opportunity to build a global network that may, you know, come in come to help you in any, in any number of ways, you know, as, in, when you get into your career. People that you went to Fordham with, and you'll be able to contact and say, hey, we're doing some work in your company, in your country. What can you help me help, you know, to learn about this? So uh, take advantage of that. That's another aspect of why this is such a great opportunity in terms of uh, learning about global business. Uh, the Gabelli School and Fordham as a whole is very big on um, creating business people who um, have a purpose to their lives and who uh, want, to, want to make the world a better place. And you've heard a little bit about that already today, I'm sure, about the Jesuit values of Fordham. And our dean, Dean Rappatoli, believes strongly in this and encourages our students very much to engage. We have a number of opportunities through things like uh, Fair Trade, a student group that, that works on fair trade marketing around the world. Um, uh, we have um, the uh, Social Innovation Collaboratory. Um, you'll have an opportunity in freshman year to apply for something called Social Impact 360. Um, th there's all kinds of opportunities to uh, figure out how business, your business career can also help you help the world make it a better place. And then we have other volunteer opportunities. We have this Urban Plunge that was re referenced, I think, this morning when you, in your, one of your sessions. If any of you are interested, you can come, to, come here a couple days early before orientation starts and um, along, meet some other students who share your interest in social justice. You might probably go out and do a project together as a team, uh, do a volunteer projects in, in part of the city. Um, so it's a great way to kind of get a head start on, uh, on orientation by doing Urban Plunge. Um, there are these global outreach trips you can apply to where you can go somewhere else in the United States or even in other countries for a week or 10 days and uh, be, participate in a mission trip. I'm sure you're familiar from high school even, perhaps with things like this, but there's some really wonderful opportunities here along those lines. Uh, this summer, we've been trying to engage with you um, and um, you know, uh, I'm not expecting 100% participation. Some people have a busy summer and other people have more free time, but the, these opportunities are there for you to take advantage of to the extent you want to. One of them uh, back in early June was with faculty members. You had a list of possible uh, sessions to listen to. I don't know if any of you took, uh, caught one or two of those. Uh, this past week, uh, some of the older students uh, have been contacting some of you uh, to give you an opportunity to talk to them, ask them questions. Um, and um, later in the summer, I'll, I'll also set up a week of uh, some Zoom opportunities with some of our alumni. So that's a great opportunity. There's a, already another chance to start networking, talk to some uh, of our alums who um, are now out in the field working in different industries and uh, hear about what, how they uh, went from the Gabelli School into their career. Please just jump up if you have a question, don't, uh, yes. Good. So first of all, you can do study abroad. The way we have structured the program in the Gabelli School, you can do study abroad as early as the spring of sophomore year if you go to the London campus, because the courses that you would need to take in the spring of sophomore year are all available to you at our Fordham London campus. But you'll have a little bit more of a, again, a little bit more of a global exposure if you choose to go there that semester and, and do your semester abroad at London. You can go to London also in junior year 
but in junior year, you also could do a semester in any one of about 100 or 150 programs around the world that we partner with. So um, the, the study abroad office, uh, first of all, their website has a lot of this information. And um, when you get here, there'll be sessions that you can go to to learn more uh, about the opportunities. You can look through all the different countries. Once you get, if you really do want to go somewhere other than London, and you know, once you get close and you've applied and study abroad has accepted you and you're, you're going to spend, say, spring of junior year somewhere, well, by the beginning of fall of junior year, we should sit down and talk about that so that once you have the list of courses that are available, we'll go over that in detail and, and figure out strategy-wise how to make sure you're still on track to finish everything you need to finish. If you go to London, your tuition is completely part of that package, right? So um, if you um, live on campus here, you won't be paying for campus here, but you will have to pay for the, the flat that you and some of your classmates will be sharing in London. But the tuition part is, is just folded in as what you, you know, and if you have financial aid here, that goes with you completely portable with you if you go to Fordham London. Um, if you go to other programs, there may be some of that same relation, it depends on how close the relationship we have with that particular program. And that's the kind of detail you'll have to get from the study abroad office. Um, in some places, the other extreme might be, you're basically, it's almost like you're not going to Fordham that semester and instead of paying for tuition, you're paying for the program. But in most cases, they have something worked out where you may have a reduced uh, tuition that semester, but um, you still pay through Fordham and you go to that program. You know, it's all, it's different for every one of them. Thank you, that's a good question. All right, so um, if you've got these slides before, or if you want to uh, email me afterwards, I'll send them. Here are some of those helpful. Um, there is a financial aid email there for those of you who are still working on your financial aid packaging. Res Life email for those of you who are uh, setting up um, housing on campus. Um, Orient LC, if you have questions about the actual program on August 29th and 30th and 31st, and that will again be run by our, our student involvement team. Um, if you have questions about technology on campus, Help IT uh, can help you uh, understand how you're going to interact with the Wi-Fi on campus and everything else. Uh, and there's our social media handles. For those of you who tweet, go ahead and tweet. Just say nice things about me when you tweet. Okay, so um, I won't go through these in detail, but there's some very important questions here. So again, if you, if you got this, take a look at it. This last slide um, has some very good points, some of which you've already heard me say, and, um, and you'll hear me say more uh, when we have our advising sessions, um, you know, about visiting the professors during their office hours and things like that. Okay. Um, I'm now going to ask, let's see, I'm gonna stop sharing for a second. Okay. Let's take a look through the new WWW Fordham. The analogy that someone used with me that I find helpful is getting rid of my.fordham and just going to the regular website. It's kind of like when you go to something like Amazon. Anybody can go to amazon.com and start looking around at, at different things they sell or whatever. But if you're a member and you sign in, then you have the, the website kind of knows it's you and you can look up your own past orders or things like that. So that's the way it's going to be now. You go to www.fordham.edu like anybody else, but when you go there and you sign in, it knows it's you and you have access to your own applications that anybody else wouldn't have access to. Okay. So here's the new website. Uh, and here's the sign in. So do I have a volunteer? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you sign in and we're gonna look at something called DegreeWorks. And I wanna show you how DegreeWorks works. It's basically, people will see what classes you're, you're, you're assigned to for the fall, but you're basically assigned to the same classes everybody else is. So I don't think it's anything too. So if I have a volunteer, who's brave? Okay, there we go.
you know your quorum absolutely yeah. I was going to send me a push. I have to get my phone. Oh, right. Yes, they have to do the push. Cybersecurity. All right, we're in. Thank you. So now I should share the screen again, right? Oh, okay. All right. Can you? Thank you. Okay. So you've logged in and see it says uh, Julie Jurgenti right there at the top. And so um, I want to go to degree works, which I think I'm going to find under my apps. This is all new for me too, so uh, bear with me. Okay, under academic applications, see the graduation cap? That's our degree works. So we go there. And we wait and we hope. Loading. <laughs> it's not that bad, except for what we're seeing right now. I live in the dorm and I don't find any problem. I can stream shows at night and. Really? Yeah. I tried the new portal and I don't think it works that well. Um, I think I went here and then. Um, my account, and then you can do degree works, and this one should work. Fingers crossed. That worked for me. So if you have well, you. going to um, my student, and then down. Yeah, so you have my apps and you have my pages. Go to my pages, go to your student page. You should be able to find things there as well. Um, but no, still not working. <laughs> Okay. Well, then we'll do the backup plan, which is I hope I kept it on here. Hmm. Maybe not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll try that. Yeah. So I can just close this out. Even I have to do the push.
I can access your degree works. But if I spell out Julia, thank you. There we go. So uh, here's degree works. And this is an extremely helpful program throughout your four years, especially I'd say a little bit before registration time. So you'll be registering. I took care of your registration for the fall, um, but in November, you'll be registering for the spring semester. And during some of our advising sessions before that, I'll make sure you know how to do it, how to get in and register. And I'll give you some guidance on what kinds of classes you'll be choosing. I think you already know from today's presentation, some of what you'll be looking for to do in the spring. But before you register each semester all along the way, all through the four years, eight semesters, you should be looking at degree works before you register to figure out your strategy of what you want to take next semester. And then after you register, about a day or two or three after that, you should go back and look at degree works to make sure it's showing that the things you registered for are counting in the areas you thought they were going to count. Okay, so this is your responsibility, but this is the official document that by the time you get to graduation in four years, you've got all the boxes checked and then you know you're set to graduate. So at the top is your name, your Fordham ID number, your um, how many credits you may already have earned. Most of you won't have any credits earned yet unless I put in, unless your AP credits have already gone in or whatever. And then you come down, this top part is just sort of umbrella things all the things from an umbrella perspective that you need to have to graduate. You have to finish 38 three plus credit courses. Now I said 40 courses to graduate. That's because during that sophomore year, when you're doing the famous sophomore challenge, we do something tricky with two of your classes with business communications and information systems. We break them in half and you do part one in the fall and part two in the spring. So instead of them being taken as three credit classes, you take them as 1.5, two 1.5 credits in the fall and two 1.5 credits in the fall. So this lists, um, instead of listing 40 courses, it says you need 38 three plus credit courses and then four 1.5 credit. Those are those two business common info systems. So basically it's 40 classes. So these up here are sort of the umbrella things you need to do to graduate. Your GPA has to be 2.0 or better, All right? I hope I'm not talking to any of you because you don't have a 2.0 at some point. It's rare, rare that I have to do that. Um, so then this next section is those liberal arts core things that we talked about earlier, English composition and the second English class, which is called text and context, the two philosophies, the theology, the history, down at the bottom, fine arts. And the thing is, it tells you the courses or um, either the specific classes or it'll give you an attribute. So for fine arts, it lists FACC as the attribute code so when you look up classes, if you remember those six icons, one of them was how to view your registration. Another one was browse classes. If you go to browse classes, you can either put in a specific class you're looking to see if it's available, like English 1102, that's English Composition 2. So in the spring, you're gonna all, probably all take English Composition 2. You can put in ENGL and English will pop up and then you can put in 1102 and it'll show you all the 1102s offered but it'll show you every 1102 on both campuses. So you might wanna to go to advanced search where you can put in some more specific details and you can put in, just show me the Fordham College Lincoln Center versions of English 1102 and you'll get only the ones on this campus, which is what you want. The other thing you can do with advanced search is this. You can look up a course by its um, attribute. So if you're looking to see, I have to fulfill this fine arts core requirement, which courses can I take to fulfill it? you can look up the fine arts attribute and it'll show you art history 1100 or 1101 or 1102, music history 1100, theater 1100, visual arts 1101, which is a course called urbanism about architecture, visual arts 1135, visual thinking it's called. Those are the courses that fulfill the fine arts core requirement. So you wanna make sure, don't just say, oh, I think I'll take photography and think that's gonna fulfill your fine arts core requirement because as a matter of fact, it doesn't. Okay, if you wanna take photography, that's fine. It's one of your elective courses, um, but you wanna use degree works to make sure you're taking courses that fulfill the requirements you think they're, they're, they're gonna fulfill. So right now, Julia has some blue, we have all these red boxes. Those are the things that need to get fulfilled to, you know, for, to, to graduate. Some of them are already blue with a little white tilde in them. And those are the courses you're already registered in. 
And by December, when Julia passes all of them with glowing colors, they all will become green boxes with a little white check mark. And the goal in the end of four years is to have all those red boxes become green boxes, all right? It's very simple. That and $200,000 will get you a diploma, <laughs> um, more or less. <laughs> so uh, any questions about degree works? And then down at the bottom are the in-progress courses. So the blue boxes that are there also are listed down at the bottom as the courses that are in progress. And there you'll see ground floor, she's in statistics, uh, math for business finite, uh, philosophy of human nature, faith and critical reason. And then the first year advising, which is that once a week, not every week class you'll have with me. Hmm. Yeah, there you go. Did you have AP credit for macro and micro? No, there you go. And you have AP credit for macro and micro? Okay. Questions? Okay. That's about all I have, folks. So if you don't have questions, or if you do have questions, do you wanna, Steph, do you have any thoughts you wanna? What was the one you gave as an example? Like Grammarly. Grammarly? Yeah. I don't know off the top of my head. There are certain things I know of that we, the Bowie students all get access to the uh, Wall Street Journal online. Um, so my app, some of the my apps are there, are things that we, that we have these contracts with. Like the Wall Street Journal, you'll see it on your My Apps. So that would be one place. And then, you know, you may learn things as you get here through conversations and other sessions and stuff. But I, I've not heard of a listing somewhere like that. I don't know if it's on Gordon's website or if it's on like Connect. Yeah, so Gabelli Connect is another, it's a sort of a website within a website, sort of our own Gabelli School. Um, so that will have some information. Um, there are also certain discounts and things that the government has worked out. I don't know where those are listed, but. Yeah, they might have some like your current. Yeah, so everything we have to sort of recreate some things this fall and we see out. Um, the, is that way across the street? Alex has to have discounts as well. Yeah, I think they have to pay for that. They survived, thank God. Uh, there are certain things we have, like we have certain access to like Bloomberg terminal training sessions. And then yeah. you mentioned the New York Times, so it's like New York Times. New York Times is something that's for the university. Do you guys have Barron's? Barron's? Uh, yeah, and the one I know a lot of the students use is the, uh, what's the one every morning? Morning Brew. Morning, morning Brew is a good one to sign up. That's free. That's what we're getting very fun. You guys, it's done. That's the other thing to remember is there are four sort of undergraduate schools or programs. Fordham College of Roosevelt, Fordham College of Roosevelt, Fordham School of Roosevelt, and West Philly. And registration, for example, is one thing that sounds a little different. But so, for you, the way I do it is it's done. I interact with you individually. If there's something you've seen, your schedule doesn't look right. You know, um, I thought I was going to have, you know, I did take macro and micro AP, but I ended up getting three in both of them. I need to support five. And you didn't assign me either macro or micro for the fall. Send me an email. I might decide to give you at least one of those in the fall, the other one you can do in the spring. Um, 
If you had AP credit for stats, which unfortunately does not replace our stats number one class, you put the recon department, you're going to be taking stats two, and their, their experience has been that some AP stats classes do not prepare students properly for stats two. So even if you have AP stats, we do give you a, a credit for it, but we ask you to take our stats one. Uh, so for those students, I often gave you stats this fall because I figured if you already had AP stats, you have to take stats one here, you might as well take it for the semester. You can still be fresh somewhat in mind. It's not bad in your first semester, maybe you have one class, it might be a little bit easier to help with the transition. So that would be the thing. Um, if you have to screen AP composition, are there certain electives in it? Yeah, so if you get elective credit for AP English, history, um, stats, uh, you get credit if you have AP art history, or you're fine art. And you get you get credit for AP macro, AP micro, you get an AP calculus, all of those you they replace the actual art course. Do you have any events you want to do on students for math skills together with the instructor? Yes, we have done some of those. I'll be honest with you. Um, you know, Dean Rappacholi loves to think, you know, of the belly school is one. And, and there are some ways in which there's some interaction. Some student clubs interact across the campuses. A couple of our honors programs are represented on both, by both campuses. So those students that get hyped a bit back and forth. And every student, not every student, but a lot of students do choose to take, say, one class on the other campus at some point. It's pretty easy to get free and there for the semester. They got to get. You just have to make sure you leave about an hour before and after class. You know, you'll need about 35 minutes, but just leave an hour. But um, I'll be honest with you, my experience is the Gabelli School and Lincoln Center students connect with the Fordham College and Lincoln Center students. You're in the same dorm rooms, you know, suites, you know, you know, some of the student clubs are obviously go across the two schools. Even some of the business clubs have a lot of Fordham College and Lincoln Center students in them. Um, and then there are the clubs that have to do with like ethnic culture or, you know, Acapella or uh, splinter group, theater, belly caves, lion school, dance. Uh, so there's all kinds of clubs where you can interact with people with your Florida College and Center friends. And they're a great group. They're talented people. It's a very talented campus. Um, so that's what I find is where the interaction is happening. Uh, less so between, not that there's none, but it just tends to be less because the two campuses are in some ways. Sometimes. Ah, good. You've been a great audience. You're outside, right? <laughs> Thank you so much, Father Van. So we're now going to transition to student and parent specific programming. So I'm going to ask students to remain seated while parents get up and follow. I'll ask Patrick, Raina, and Lisa to your next session. Sure. 